An arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers where the difference between consecutive numbers is constant. So if we look at this arithmetic sequence here, the sequence is just a set of numbers separated by commas. If we take any two consecutive terms, we'll find that the difference between them is, is 3. You can see that 5 minus 2 is 3. You can see that 8 minus 5 is 3, 11 minus 8 is 3, and so on. There are two important parameters that we need to define an arithmetic sequence. We need the first term, or t1, which is also called a, small letter a, and for this sequence it is 2. We also need what's called a common difference. That is the difference between any two consecutive terms. That's given the letter d, and to find d, we just take any term and subtract the previous term. So if we take t2 and subtract t1, we'll get the common difference d, which is 3. But of course we could also work out, say, t5 minus t4. t5 is 14, that's the fifth term, and t4 is 11. And that will also give us the difference d. Here is another example of an arithmetic sequence. The first term, or t1, which is also denoted by small a, is 4. The common difference, d, is got by taking any term and subtracting the previous term. So let's suppose we take the second term, t2, and subtract the first term. So that's going to give us 2 minus 4, which is minus 2. So d can be negative. So you can see that 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4, and so on. Of course, we could have worked this out by taking, say, the seventh term, which is actually minus 8, and subtracting the sixth term, which is minus 6. So we'd have minus 8 minus minus 6, and that's minus 8 plus 6 which is minus 2. So we just take any term and subtract the previous term to get d. In general, for an arithmetic sequence, the first term is called a. The second term is got by adding d onto a. So the second term is a plus d. The third term is got by adding d onto the second term. So that's a plus d plus d, or a plus 2d. The fourth term is got by adding d onto the third term. That's a plus 2d plus 1d. That's a plus 3d. And so on. So this is t1. t2 is a plus 1d. t3 is a plus 2d. t4 is a plus 3d. Suppose we want to go as far as tn. tn is the nth term, where n is any number. Well, let's look at the pattern here. t2 is a plus 1d. There's a 1 here, of course t3 is a plus 2d, t4 is a plus 3d, so tn is going to be a plus something times d. Well, that's something, that coefficient of d is one less than the subscript of t. So, um, we can see that, that the coefficient of d here is just 4 minus 1. Similarly here, the coefficient of d is just a subscript minus 1. So in general then, for the tn, the coefficient is going to be the subscript minus 1. The subscript is n, and we subtract 1, and we multiply by d. So we need brackets around this, of course, because there are two terms here. So the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. So as an example, let's find t5, that is the fifth term of the arithmetic sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, etc. Okay, we need to write down what a is for this sequence. a is the first term. First term is 2. We need the difference d, which is got by taking any term and subtracting the previous term. So 5 minus 2 will give us the difference, which is 3. And then we apply our formula, tn. Well, n is 5, so we have t5 equals a, which is 2, plus 5 minus 1 times d, which is 3. So that's going to be 2 plus 4 times 3. That's 2 plus 12, which is 14. So that's quite straightforward. We could have just worked this out, actually, because I have the first four terms written down here. 
So the fifth term is got by adding 3 onto the fourth term. 11 plus 3 is indeed 14. Let's get t50. Well, it's the same formula. The first term a is 2 plus n is 50. Be 50 minus 1 times the difference, which is 3. So this is going to be 2 plus 49 times 3. 49 times 3 is 147. So we get that T50, the 50th term of this sequence. If you were to write this out, write out 50 terms, we'd, the 50th term would be 149. An arithmetic series is just an arithmetic sequence where we simply add all the terms together. So when we're talking about a series, it means that we're summing the terms of our sequence. Suppose we have this arithmetic series here. It's arithmetic because if we take any term and subtract the previous term, we get a constant. So if we take t2 and subtract t1, t2 is 2, t1 is 1, we get 1. So this is our difference, d. Uh, like if I take the fifth term, t5, and subtract the fourth term. Well, the fifth term is actually 5. The fourth term here is actually 4. Of course, we get 1 as well. So there's a constant difference between the terms. So this is arithmetic. Now this is an interesting problem. We want to add up this series as far as plus 100. We can use the letter S to denote this sum and the subscript 100 tells us that we're taking 100 terms of this arithmetic series. For this particular series of course 100 happens to equal one, uh, the last term. Now to do this on a calculator would take a long time. Um, so there's an interesting trick that I can use which basically also helps to derive a formula for the sum of an arithmetic series. The trick is to write down this series backwards underneath our first series and sum vertically, sum these two series vertically. That means we're going to be adding S100 onto itself, so we're going to get two times the series. So we're going to get two times the sum of all the numbers, all the natural numbers from 1 to 100. Now, 100 plus 1 is 101, 99 plus 2 is 101, 98 plus 3 is 101, and so on. So you can see the pattern. We're going to get 101 when we sum vertically. Over here we have 101, then 101 again, another 101. So we have a lot of terms in between. I'm not going to write them out, of course. There's actually 100 of these 101s. So 2 times S100 is 100 times 101. Now 100 times 101 can be done without a calculator. That's 10,100. We just add two zeros onto 101, which means that S100 is 10,100 divided by 2. And that's actually 5,050. So that's a quick way to sum all the natural numbers from 1 up to 100. Here is a formula for getting the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series. And I'm going to apply this formula to this series here. So what we need is n. Well, n is 100. We need a. a is the first term. a is 1. And we need d, which is the difference between consecutive terms. d is also 1. So if we want to get s100, we just plug 100 in for n, we plug 1 in for a, so that we get 2 times 1, plus 100 in for n, that's 100 minus 1, times the difference which is 1, and from this we get, um, well, I'll just write 100 over, I'll leave 100 over 2 like this, and we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus 99 times 1, so we get 2 plus 99, which is 101, and that leads us to the, what we saw earlier, 100 times 101 is 10,100, divided by 2 is 5050. What I will do next now is prove this formula. Now you probably won't need to know what, how to prove this, but I'll just do this. The way that I will derive Sn for an arithmetic series is to approach it like you saw for summing all the natural numbers from 1 to 100. That was an arithmetic series. We wrote down all the numbers from 1 up to 100. Now here we're talking about the general case, of course. The first term of an arithmetic series is t1 or is a. The second term is a plus 1d. 
the third term T3 is A plus 2D, and so on. The nth term, which you saw earlier, is A plus N minus 1D. That's the formula I explained to you earlier. So, if this is the nth term, well, the term before the nth term is the N minus first term. This is TN minus 1. You can see that the coefficient of D, N minus 2, is got by taking the subscript, which is N minus 1, and subtracting 1. So, the coefficient of D is the subscript of t minus 1. You can see that n minus 2 is just n minus 1 minus 1. Similarly for the third last term, you can see that the coefficient of d is got by taking the subscript of t and subtracting 1. So the coefficient of d is n minus 3. So Sn is got by summing all these terms, T1 plus T2 plus T3, up as far as Tn. What we do then, just like as you saw before, when we were summing all the numbers from 1 to 100, we write this series down in reverse. So we write the last term first. The last term was 100 in the example you saw, and we wrote it under 1. So here we're going to write A plus N minus 1 times D underneath the first term, which is A. And underneath the second term, which is a plus d, we're going to write down the second last term, which is a plus n minus 2d. And underneath the third term, t3, we're going to write down the third last term, which is a plus n minus 3 times d. And underneath the third last term, we're going to write down the third term, which is a plus 2d. So all we're doing is basically writing this series down backwards. And finally, the first term is A. We write that under the last term. The next step, just like before, is to add these two series together. Sn plus Sn. We're going to get 2 times Sn. So we'd have to divide by 2 at the end. And we add like this. So um, adding like this and adding up the result is the same as adding this series onto itself. So we have A plus A plus N minus 1D. Well, um, a plus A is 2A, and then we have this N minus 1D. So what I did there was I added this term onto this term. And then we're going to add this one here onto this one here. So A plus A gives us 2A. Now we get 1D plus N minus 2D. Well, if we add 1 onto N minus 2, what do we get? 1 plus N minus 2 is actually N minus 1 because plus 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So when we add the d's together, we actually get n minus 1d. Um, similarly here, we're going to add this term onto this term here. So we have a plus a is 2a. And we have 2d plus n minus 3d. So that's 2 plus n minus 3, which is, of course, n minus 1. So you can see what's happening. We're just getting the same result, just like you saw before, when we added these terms for um, the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. We were getting 101, 101, 101. So that pattern will continue. So when we add these two terms together, a plus a gives 2a, n minus 3 plus 2d. Well, that's n minus 3 plus 2, or n minus 1d. n minus 2 plus 1 here will give us another n minus 1. Running out of space here. And the last term, a plus a gives us 2a. And we just have n minus 1d. We have nothing to add it onto here. So now you see that we have this thing written down repeatedly. And uh, how many of them do we have? Well, there are n terms in this series. Where Sn, that's the meaning of Sn. It's the sum of the first n terms. T1 plus T2 plus T3 up as far as Tn. So we basically have n of these terms written down. So rather than, rather than adding them up n times, we could just multiply n by this here.
And finally then, to get SN, we just divide both sides by 2. So we divide all this by 2, or we can just put N over 2. N is multiplied into this, so I just put N over 2 into 2A plus N minus 1D. So this is a formula that you need to know how to work with, um, but you probably don't need to know how to derive it.